Okay. Tell me when you're ready. Twitch should be live. I'm looking at it now. Uh, give me a second to check audio. Okay. Yeah, we're we're good. We're golden. Okay. <clears throat> you ready? Yep. Okay. Th- okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 240 of the Security Podcast here on In30. Let's make sure we have everything else. Hey, Tom, can you see me? Can you see me? I can. I, I see you. You're, you're right there. Uh-huh. Can you hear me? Hearing? I, We're good? You're hearing? I, I think... Wait, hang on. Talk again? Oh, can you hear me? What? Yo, uh, what? your microphone. Yeah. Hit space bar. Oh, uh, got it. Okay. Can you see my screen? <laughs> I, uh, I'm sharing my screen. Wait, Can you see my screen? I, I can't see the screen. No. no. Okay, I'm going to cancel. I'm going to come back. Okay. <laughs> so I'm sure... <laughs> I know you're all cringing right now, but literally this has been everyone's... Uh, I don't want to say hell for the last three weeks, four weeks, but I feel like it is. I feel like every our, our new like and subscribe and listen to my SoundCloud has been, Can you hear me? Can you unmute yourself? Yep. Everything else. And I will give big props again to the teachers who who get the first graders to understand the dialogue box that they're muting, because <laughs> that's a big challenge. But anyway, yeah, it's again, um, it, there's I guess all the security people are really just taking off. Like I think they're just socially distancing. Like I haven't heard, we haven't literally heard anything. Yeah, there was there's one thing like with uh, Team Fortress Two, which is a game which may or may not be a thing. I'm still waiting for the news, the dust to settle on that one. But uh, yeah, other than that, it's been really, really, really quiet. Cansec West was, I guess, last week or two weeks ago. But again, it's a security not conference, but exploitation fair in uh, Vancouver where they try to hack things. That was remote. You had to mail in the exploits. But these are like we were able to use these six vulnerabilities in Chrome to get the Mac calculator working. And nice. you're like, okay, here's 80 grand for doing that. But again, that doesn't really help us because what they do is they send the exploits. They also send it to everybody. So by the time it's published and shown, it's already fixed. So again, the the idea of just keeping updated is is the right answer. So and but I mean, I what, what else are you going to do? Right? Yeah. Run, run your patches. You're not that busy right now. So unless I'm, you're in healthcare, if you're in healthcare or actively like keeping networks alive or stocking shelves at a grocery store, like all that stuff, okay, you're busy enough. Just let automatic updates take their course, and it's cool. Don't don't click anything. Or if you have the one laptop for all your kids and everything, yeah, yeah don't don't do it on your on your main machine. But again, it's uh, like we haven't heard any. I mean, there's no fancy fancy exploits. There's no there's no jailbreaking things out there. There's there's nothing. It's it's just barren. And you know what? That's not a bad thing, unless you make money on security. But yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not really bad. And I, I imagine that a lot of the, the bigger companies, the more well-known researchers are, are kind of you know sitting on some stuff and saying, all right, I can read the room. Let's let's hold off for a hot minute. I mean, we have the Black Hat and DEF CON announcements. I think DEF CON moved their announcement schedule up to May 15th. This is usually the time people are writing to submit so they can get on and, and drop and drop an exploit. But still, it's just, it's, uh, it's, what we're he- I mean, what we're hearing is just the normal run of the mill uh, scams, COVID nineteen scams, IRS scams. Nothing. I mean, exploitation for money. But like, I, we haven't heard new ransomware. I mean, to be honest, I think this would be like a perfect time to take down something. But uh, I've even gotten a. Uh, I mean, this is just anecdotal, right? It's it's uh, anecdata. But uh, I've experienced a massive, massive drop in the amount of scam calls I've been getting, which is kind of nice. Hopefully it stays that way. The, yeah, like you said, I've been getting a lot of the, I do get these, the Chinese phone scams. They call you in Chinese. Yep. So my problem is somehow the, my, my company, my, my, my public employer has been labeled as spam by Nomo Robo. <laughs> So, oh, no. so it's the caller ID is spam question mark and then the company. <laughs> and so, I mean, at least it rings, but it's, I have to now pay attention to it, but 
I, I wish you can like call them and say, hey, I'm sure you can. I just I don't care that much because I get an email later that says what whatever the call was. So no, but I, you're right. I haven't got the good news is I haven't gotten solicitors, no solicitors, no, no real like spammy phone calls. I do get Karen from uh, the warranty department of the car. Yeah, I get those too. But I haven't gotten We're calling about your car's extended service warranty. Yeah. But I haven't gotten the 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 healthcare one. We'll ship you a new knee brace. I've tried. Yeah. It doesn't. They don't actually ship you the new knee brace. <laughs> when they find um, out you're sick, then they then they hang up. I I think I got one uh, warning about my social security number expiring, and the FBI wants me to call them at a weird like one eight seven seven number. Uh, so yeah, that's that's not happening. But again, look, it's just the it's just the usual scams that we're seeing. And so and then the big one is still Zoom. Still Zoom has a whole bunch of holes and they claim that they're upgrading. I, I look, I'm I'm an optimist. I would give them the benefit of the doubt. This is basically as you put a service in, even Google and Apple ran into this. All the kids realized if you put a one star review in the app store with too many of them, it takes the app down. So they've been one star in Google Classroom and uh, it, was in, it was in China, some Chinese app that the kids were using, but all the Google Classroom and Zoom and Google Meet were all getting one stars to be pulled and then they had to go in and fix it. So other than like the small social engineering things, you said it's just it's it's we're all home and we're all stuck. And I think even the hackers have to now like leave the basement to figure out what's going like having to raise kids and do all this. So I, I do have one one small thing and, and I, this is totally unprompted, but I did buy this uh, this Raspberry Pi four. Uh, so I, I, I got this guy full little kit uh, and it's really nice uh it was cheap i think the whole kit with everything uh was a hundred bucks i got the one with a bunch of ram um what's really cool though is if you're just doing like limited stuff not like intense processing but if you're just doing like web browsing text processing that sort of thing um it right right here there there are these two ports it can run dual monitors you can run two monitors off this little guy it's really nice 4k uh, no, no, two 1080p monitors. Um, uh, although the power is now USB C, so upgrades. I was going to say, uh, now all the articles are coming out. Don't buy anything that's not USB C, which I think is very good advice. Yep. We're st it's still, uh, it's, I mean, you have to have very disciplined principles on this, but. <laughs> But anyway, okay, so so other than the Zoom exploits that we're hearing, I mean, we, we've, we've, we've beaten that horse. It's your company is either using Zoom or, or you've moved on from it, but we can't tell you to not use it. It's like you're going to say, oh, these two security people on some, some amateur security podcast said I'm not using Zoom. What you can try to do is say, does it comply with COPPA and HIPAA? But I don't know how, I mean, that may get you a week, but that's about it. So you're just going to have to deal with it. So you can use, find find the old laptop or iPad, download it on it, onto it, buy one of the, some, find some cheap tablets, some Android tablet, put it on and deal with it that way. Or just bite the bullet and say, when it's done, I'm just going to clean my machines out and, and be done with it. But. Like you said, if I, I don't think that too many people are exploiting it other than the fact that we find holes. I want to be an optimist here. I don't think too many people are actively saying, oh, yeah, it's terrible security, so we're going to exploit. I think it's just a lot of people screaming and yelling. Yeah, I, I haven't heard of anything <laughs> active. It's just a whole lot of, hey, this is really bad kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, could it turn into something? Sure, it's possible. Um, if you do have control over the kind of infrastructure you use in your your company your business or even just with your family um check out jitsi.org j-i-t-s-i.org uh open source they've got a web version it works you can you know spawn up a conference get people loaded into it um really really nice stuff um but yeah yeah that's, so, that's really all i've got there well, so, I mean, we haven't seen you for a while, but what I'm hearing, and this is really for the parents out there. Um, so 
five years ago, our company or my school went to Google only. And and you've heard us say, oh, Google, Google's awesome. The Chromebooks are excellent. We've recommended Chromebooks. This is it. And for about five or six years, it's every school district went to Google. And I loved it. It was great. It was, I mean, for me and programming, it doesn't work, but for literally everything else, Google Classroom was there, which I never liked. I will always go on record that I never liked Google Classroom, but it was there. People were using it. Now we're here. And and last year, our school went all Microsoft. They, we, got, we got these Lenovo $300 flip things like Windows 10, whatever it is. For $300, they're really nice. Um, I think ours has four gigs of RAM, some Celeron, like higher than Celeron, whatever the, the step up from Celeron, but not Pentium. The, the core two duo. Yeah, something like that. The kids got Celeron, but you know what? The thing just works. And I didn't, I, I, you've heard me say I'm not a touchscreen type of guy on the laptop, but with this, it bends around so you can take notes in one note. And to be honest with you, it's like, I'm so happy that we pulled the bandaid off and said, we're going back to Microsoft because they, if you haven't looked at them, they really upped their game. I didn't realize that they did a competitor to Google docs. So word Excel and PowerPoint is in the cloud and it is awesome. I, I mean, I think we've said this before, but I want to reiterate that. It works far, far, far better than it ever rationally should. Like it, it like, Everybody knows the the standard, you know, web app experience where it's slow and it lags a little bit and doing anything complex is kind of kind of janky. But with with Word, at least because I've I've only used Word on Office 365, like, like the online version for Word, it almost feels native. It almost feels like it's just another like you've opened up Word on your regular laptop and you're using it there. It is scary good. Uh, how much work they've put into this to make everything just feel cohesive and right. Um, and it works perfectly with, with their storage solution, right? Um, like you can, you can just save stuff and pull stuff directly to and from OneDrive, just like it was, like it was a, a hard drive plugged into your computer. Um, it's trying to explain it. It's kind of weird because it's, it's quite literally just like using a, the desktop application, but it's not, it's in the cloud and you can use it everywhere. Uh, I really enjoy it. It's kind of weird to talk about Microsoft this way. Well, look, it's the, I remember again for text editing, you want, you want to take somebody, somebody's calling you and you have the computer and you want to write down someone's phone number. Hold on. Let me all open word. Click, 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 click. You're waiting. You're waiting. You're waiting. Uh, I don't just open something. And so you have this, like, it takes forever feeling. And with the Chromebook, you went to Docs. Guess what? Docs just opened. But Microsoft has really gotten their game together and doing it online actually works. And from what I hear from the students who didn't want to pay for a 365 subscription or whatever it was, the on, and don't hold me to this, but online was free. So you couldn't use it on your computer. You didn't get the templates. You didn't get this, but online was free. And I guess you print from there or don't print from there, whatever it was, and it worked. But they took that and and um, and they made it work. So we're using this. And the reason I'm, I was thinking about this, because someone said to me, we only have Google products. What should we do? And I'm like, oh, well, you should be using, uh, use OneNote to take your notes. I'm like, oh, you can't do OneNote. Okay, you should use Teams. Oh, you don't have Teams. You, you can only use Google Classroom. And it was just really frustrating to try and merge these features into these little, little things. And it was, it is, so again, I want to say big, big thumbs up to uh, Microsoft. So the big features that we like, if you've never used it. So if you have a 365 subscription, I'm going to tell you why you want it in a minute. Um, micro, OneNote. So OneNote is, is basically like a note-taking app. So instead of paying, so the note-taking app, now for teachers, you can give each student or whatever a, a worksheet or whatever it is. But if you just want to note take, you just take it there and you export it to PDF. You can export it to picture. You can print it. You can do whatever. You can share it. It is like, it really works. OneNote is this giant, like hidden behemoth that the people who know about it love it and use it for everything. The people who don't, they don't know why you would ever use this over something just like notepad.exe. That works for notes, right? Uh, yeah, kind of. But let's say you've got one of those flipping laptops. 
you can literally be typing notes make a drawing and then like it, it gets like the the dotted line outline you can drag that around the page you can attach text to it you can take like clips from from websites or different like embeddable objects and throw them in this thing you can have cross notebook like wiki reference links so when you click on one thing it takes you to like definitions in a different notebook that you've made it is insanely powerful i know i know tech guys that ha literally have their entire careers their entire personal wiki is built into OneNote files it is scary scary good and uh, frankly i don't know why some some startup hasn't like copied that functionality and put it somewhere else because as a standalone product it could absolutely hold its own uh it is really really nice so so the the, key, the magic feature though however is you need some sort of touch screen that that's really the magic feature yep and i didn't realize this till i'm so i'm sitting here at home and and having learning to how to take notes i just got an ipad pro and i put one note on it it does work on ios and i'm like this is amazing like i should have been like I have been doing it throughout the year, but I should really be like literally everything just for note taking because I'm looking because I am looking for like a good note taking app. And somebody said, just use either the default Apple notes or if you have one note. So I tried one. I'm like, this is awesome. Like I'm done with it. It loads fast. That was always an issue loading and it, and everything else. And you can share it. People can add to it. It just works. And then the other one is, and if you haven't experienced this, is Teams. So I've been just kind of on and off using Teams. So it's the Slack problem. Nobody wants to use Slack until you have to use Slack. And then once you use Slack, you never want to not use Slack because you already have it open. It's the same with Discord. It's, well, I have Discord. Can, you, can we do this in Discord? And everyone's fighting for the right ones. Uh, Google doesn't have a product like this. So again, it's built into Microsoft. It's part of 365. Teams just, it, it it works. Like if you're using Slack, there's no reason to move. But if you're not using Slack or you're not using Discord or whatever, try Teams and it's built natively. So I don't want to say, I don't know, but I don't think it's run on Electron. So I think it doesn't eat RAM like Slack does, but it's just this collaborative thing. And for what we know about collaborative things that they're all terrible, Teams, I consider Slack to be pretty good. Teams is right up there. Yeah. Now, one one thing to keep in mind, and you know, this is we're we're coming at this from like a product perspective, right? These are great products. Uh, now, when you chat on Teams, is it is it end to end encrypted, bulletproof, government, and Microsoft can't see what what you type? No, absolutely <laughs> not. Absolutely not. You know, does it use HTTPS? Sure. Of course it does because Microsoft is decent at their jobs. Um, they're, or they're, they're not completely incompetent, which is what you'd have to be to launch a plain text service in this day and age. Um, you know, using Discord, is it end-to-end -end encrypted? No, Discord can read your messages. They can ship it to the government. They can do all this stuff. But if what you're looking for is collaboration and you're not looking to, you know, do anything that requires massive amounts of security, right? If you're discussing classwork, yeah. Teams is fine. Discord is fine. Um, you know, would I prefer for everything to be end to end, end, -to -end encrypted? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so don't take this as like an endorsement of perfect security. This is quite literally just coming from a love of the products. Again, and it's also the idea that that I'm really big into if you have a, a programming suite to use it, to not reach out. So you shouldn't have... If you're using Office 365, you should be using OneDrive as much as you like it or hate it. Or if you're on Google products, be using Drive. Or if you're on and Docs and Sheets and everything, you should be using one collaborative tool that everyone has. Telling people, oh, you need to download Zoom for this, but I use Google Meet for this. Oh, and we use Slack for this. When you have all these other programs that work, I'm a very big fan of the native app ecosystem. So if you're paying for 365, use the 365 software. If you're using the Google versions, use the Google versions. If you're using something else, use that, but try to stick to one platform. And, and I just, I didn't realize how much this uh, Office 365 is really saving me. And I'll give you another example. I was, now that I have some time, I've been cleaning out my Google Drive folder and I'm like, what is this GDoc? 
So now I have to double click and it has to open. I can't hit space bar and the Mac brings it up. There's no quick preview. It has to go out and render it. And if you want another nail in the coffin for me, that that was it. And I remember saying this used to load fast, but now it doesn't. And so now I'm really now I'm really considering what I'm doing. And yes, all the standards are there. It does open. It does render. There's no problems with that. But I, I don't know. And and now I'm trying to convince my wife to go to OneDrive because, like you said, I think I think OneDrive holds its own. I don't think it's as good as Dropbox, but I really really yeah. think it, it holds its own. And the key here is the price. The price, and this is not an ad, not an ad, is $100 for six licenses. So Dropbox is $120 for uh, two terabytes. $100 on 365 gives you six licenses. And I think you each get a terabyte. And you shouldn't be really having more than a terabyte in the cloud, but I don't know. <laughs> That's It's it's huge. Um, the The, you know, kind of big thing that nobody talks about but everyone likes to act like they compete with it there's no competition for excel literally yeah. empires giant mega conglomerate corporations have been built on the back of excel um it is quite i, I i'm just gonna say it. excel is possibly the most important software product ever created bar none um, yes yes it is it, everything from finances to project planning to spreadsheets to building dungeons and dragons dungeons on a graph paper facsimile on the computer like it can do everything and then when you add in the admittedly horrifying security aspect of enabling macros and embedded programming languages on these spreadsheets it's literally limitless you can do incredibly horrifying things with Excel or run your entire company from a single spreadsheet. I literally worked for one of these companies that they had a master Excel document that took no kidding, five minutes to load. But when it loaded, it ran the company. It did everything from, from all the financial perspectives. Um, you know, was it good? No. Was it correct? Absolutely not. Uh, should the person who created this monster probably be, you know, put out for public execution? Yeah, it could go either way. But the fact remains, it worked. And it worked scary well. Look, I I run, uh, I have I have a side hustle, as the youngins call it. And we, I run, we run our, our entire accounting through there. Our budget, literally everything. I got a statistics degree from Rutgers using Excel. They said, you have to buy SPSS. And I said, why? We'll figure it out in Excel. And you're saying, but Sheets can do it. Yes, Sheets Sheets can do 99% of it. And when you find that one thing that it can't do, it will drive you mad. But then again, yeah. again, the rendering, the everything else, it's... <clears throat> Google is proprietary in this in in this stuff, so it's hard to render these things. And this is not a knock on Google; they they seem to solve it. And online sharing and everything is that's the killer feature. So if you're just trying to do basic spreadsheeting, that's one thing. But just you send the Excel. The, Microsoft does not do sharing well. I will give them that. OneDrive yeah. can share, but the sharing of the files still not there yet. But if you're just trying to get work done. I'm now seeing the light and and uh, going there. And like you said, I tell all my students, if you want a job, know Excel. That's all you have to do. If you know yep. Excel, don't you don't need to know PowerPoint. Nobody cares about PowerPoint anymore. If you know Excel and you know how to do formulas and you know how to look up formulas, you will have you will have a job with healthcare. Let's put it that way. Yeah, you you can basically get a job anywhere at any company if you know Excel because companies are built on top of excel uh and that's that's not a euphemism it's not hyperbole it's not even an exaggeration it is quite literally reality uh excel powers the vast majority of businesses out there and 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 again word you can always figure you can use nano you can use vim you can always find so, another replacement yep. to form you can use markdown if you really care uh but it's like it's you can, I mean, Apple's tried it with Pages. It still does, still doesn't. Not Pages, whatever it is. What I don't even know what it's called. I think it was Pages. Yeah, 
it is uh, i don't know it doesn't matter i'm looking yeah. it up as we speak but there you go it, it is there and and look this is like i said we're all trying to learn things and this i just found that that the office 365 suite just really did it for me better than anything else it's the one thing that i'm happy to have because i know everyone has it in some capacity the online version's there and i really wish that i set up teams for my students ahead of time because I would have liked to use that a lot more, but I haven't, yeah, it, but I'm happy. Just just like you said, this isn't this isn't advertisement. We we literally have not been paid by anyone in the history of this show. We just really, really like Office 365 as just a genuine product. This is is quite literally a love letter episode to Microsoft. You know, do they do things wrong? Yes. Are they the most secure company in the world? No. Do we really love Office 365? Absolutely. Uh, so if you're if you're looking for something, if if you want to get like some collaboration going, if you need Office licenses, and you're like, oh well, do I pay for that? You know, the the gold disc at, at big box store for three hundred bucks? No, no. Just get the subscription. Call it done. Yes, it's a recurring cost. I'm telling you, in this case, it is worth it. Look, look at it this way. So first off, before you go buy it, check with your kids. Your kids may have it because Microsoft is giving, I know that each student in my district has five free licenses. So that does exist. Uh, check with your employer. If your employer is using it, you probably also have five free licenses. You can go in with five, with five other people and do it that way. You can split that up. Um, you can, it's if, like I said, if you're going to buy Dropbox for $120 a year, this is $99 a year and you get this, you get everything and the storage. Um, if you're, so it's, the, there is a lot of ways to justify this cost. And I know I'm not a big fan of subscription pricing, but there are a lot of ways to do it. If you have a kid in college that doesn't offer, there's education discounts. Yep. There's. There's look, I find a kid who does have it and say, Hey, can I bum one of the one of the licenses off? I mean, that's saying to do that, but it is it and there are deals. There's $69 for one year, and sometimes it comes with the computer and everything else. So so those are the big those are the big reasons. And like I said, this is not an ad because I just told you, you had to probably get it for free. But I this is I just wanted to go with something that's really helped us. And if you haven't looked at it yet, like you're trying to go open source or you're trying to do this and you're trying to do that, it's one of those unless you're there's a reason I'm telling we're telling you Windows 10 may not be the best thing ever, but off they they really nailed it with Office and they really nailed it with Office. So yeah, yeah, I'm I have been thoroughly thoroughly disgusted by most of my time spent with Windows 10 uh, and I, I do use it every day. Uh, but Office 365 every time I load it up even even Outlook even Outlook I don't hate it. I really don't. It's it's great. It's a fantastic product. Outlook for the phone is awesome. Outlook on the desktop is hot. It's a hot dumpster fire. <laughs> okay. Outlook on the desktop on the Mac is a dumpster fire. Yeah. Outlook on the desktop on Windows works pretty well. It's, I got, my wife called me up and said, we have this PST file. Uh, how oh, do I open no. it? <laughs> from, <laughs> oh, no. I hate from, PST files. From an estate. So there's nothing. <laughs> there's just a PST oh. file. So oh, that is awful. She for thirty dollars she solved the problem, yeah. But again, it's again it's PST file again. We didn't say Outlook in this mess, but I don't know. I look like we said this wasn't meant to be an ad. It was just one of these things that we use. Uh, it's it's. I was gonna try and dovetail into backing up and what you should do for backing up because we do need another episode on backing up and actually. We were going to talk about Bitwarden. That's what we were actually going to talk about. And we didn't have a real good time to dive into it. I put it on all my stuff. So Bitwarden is um, is like LastPass or 1Password. But we wanted something else because LastPass was becoming a little too corporate and they're raising their prices and everything else. So Bitwarden is free with a paid tier, but it was cheap enough. It. I'm just a little nervous because the red now turned blue. And it's hard for me to wrap my head around it. 
I've put it on. I've been using it for the last couple of days. It's working. I have no problems, but it's blue and not red. And that is really bothering me. So, so I need another week to deal with it. So hopefully next week I can do a little more with that and we can talk about backing up and doing it, exporting the vault from last pass to there. There was one hiccup that we figured, I figured out really fast and like it didn't cause any real problems, but we'll try and do that for next week. So we're right now running out of time. So unless Tom has anything else, I'm, we're going to end it here. Uh, if you would like to try out Bitwarden for yourself, even on your own computer, uh, it is completely open source. You can download it. You can run the software yourself. Uh, so yeah, uh, hopefully next week we'll have time to play with it and show you the ropes. Ropes, it rather. <laughs> Look, it's it's free. Like LastPass was free. If you want the the like YubiKey two factor or some other sharing, that that costs money, but it was very reasonable. It was like fifteen dollars a year, which was what LastPass was back in the day. Yep. Now LastPass is like forty eight dollars for a family, and if it's like one person, you're paying forty eight dollars. So it, it's get it's starting to get expensive. So not that there's LastPass is still rock solid, and we still use it, and we still love it. It's just it's 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 hard to recommend to somebody that they need to pay money now for a password manager. So we're just I just want to try something else before we recommend it. But next week, hopefully, Bitwarden and some more backing up, and we will see everyone next week. Bye, everyone. See everyone. Okay. 31 Let me, minutes. Let me turn off Twitch.